Hey everybody, it's Sam Mimic Stepcraft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I've got a Halloween inspired box here. The one I'm going to make next is going to be a Christmas one. So I just wanted to show you how easy they are to kind of adapt for any occasion. But you can see here, this is a shaker lid. So you've got all those squares between the two pieces of acetate there. So you can see through this box. So I'm going to pop some black tissue paper and some Halloween treats inside. And then you just take the lid off and I've got the boo stamped all over the bottom there. It's a really strong box. I've used a few different things to create my little Halloween scene there on the front, which I'll show you in a moment. And it's just a great size box. So even if you didn't want to do the shaker window, you can keep it plain and you've got a nice size box there. So let me show you how to make this. Okay, so today's one is gonna be a Christmas uh, themed one using some of the Daisy May stamps, but I just wanna show you all of the stamps that I did use for that previous box. So if I just bring it in here. So for the You Are Spooktacular, it's from the Lawn Fawn Tiny Halloween. So it's just one of the stamps there. Then for the actual kind of haunted house, I've always said this, this one here is for the lover stamps and it's no place like home. And it's meant to be a new home kind of stamp set. But as soon as I see it and I look at it now through the monitor, it's Halloween. That's a haunted house. These are your, you know, your silhouette of your birds. This is like a, a dead tree. I, I don't get the feeling of new home <laughs> unless it's a new Halloween home. So that's that goes in my Halloween stash within my stamps. So you can see that I've just heat embossed it with some black glitter embossing powder. There we go, you can see it, it looks really cool. And um, I love that one, so I use that. Then for the Boo, which I stamped inside, I've used that one. And the Spooks and Spells, I love this little stamp, which I've used there. And I've put glossy accents over everything there as well. There we go, you can see all that shine. Then for the pumpkins, I used this one here, which is the Daisy May Elf and Toadstool set. So this is the Toadstool set, which you can buy separately, and that's the Elf set. And you get the dies as well, which will go, you know, for will match each one. But I just used this one here, and then this one. It's just worked really well. And then, did I use that one? No. I don't believe oh I use that one for the for today's so yeah just look at what you've got because you'd be surprised how you can kind of make it look Halloween without it actually really being for Halloween so I just thought I'd show you those things anyway I'll link as much as I can as always below but for today's one I'm using so I've pulled out this leaf here because it matched quite well with the poinsettia which is from the Daisy May. It's this one here, the Perfect Poinsettia. So I've used this one. So I've stamped a few of those and I've coloured them and cut them out so you get the dyes to match as well. And then I've used the gorgeous owl. He was always oh, just gorgeous. I loved colouring in, him in and you get the dyes as well. It's such a nice stamp set. I've made cards last year using this one. It's still available and you get the dyes on the back there as well. And you've got Have a Hoot of a Christmas, which is probably the sentiment I'm going to put on the top. The papers I've used are these ones, which are very inexpensive, which I picked up from The Works and it's the Jolly Santa. And I've used this one here because I think it works really well. Okay, so again, that's the supplies list. So for the box, you want two pieces of cardstock that are the same size and then we're just going to trim a little bit off of one of them because I just think it's easier that way. So these here, I've just got this white card stock and these are two pieces of nine and a half by nine and a half. Now one of them you're going to keep just as it is for the lid. So I'll keep this one here. This one, you just want to take a little bit off of two sides. So I'm going to pop it in my trimmer and on this one here, it sits perfectly at nine and a half. If I just bring it down to the next little marker, that's your sixteenth of an inch. And that's where I now want to just trim off this kind of slither. So you can see there what it takes away. So it's, and then I'm just going to flip it again, line it up, and I can see it's bang on nine and a half. But I'm going to bring it down just to that next little marker and trim that. So still keeping that piece, you now want to score it two and a half on all of the sides. So two and a half and then rotate. You have to rotate. Don't do two and a half and then just do come in two and a half that side because it, it won't work out. You need to just do it this way. That will ensure that you've got them all equal on all four sides. Okay, if you want to put a pencil mark just so you know that that's your base piece, although this is going to be a reinforced lid so it will have an extra score line. Pop that to one side. Now with this one, you're going to score at two and a half again on all four sides. Now this one you could do two and a half and then seven if you wanted to because they are, you know, you haven't taken anything off, but just do it like so. And then you want to do half of that two and a half again. So you're also then going to score at one and a quarter on all four sides. And that will give us a reinforced lid. I just think they look a bit more finished than just a normal single sided lid. 
okay so that's easy to see that that's the licks you do have the extra score lines and then you've got your base one there okay so pop your scoreboard away so i'm going to fold and burnish the base and then before i fold and burnish the lid i'm going to cut my aperture so this is completely optional but now what i want to create i've already done all of these pieces here which i'm going to show you and talk you through in a moment but i got these dies here so i'm going to cut my aperture with the smaller one I'm actually, well I'm not cutting it with the die, I'm using the die to draw around and then I've used that to make my kind of frames and stuff. But this one here is um, three and a quarter squared. So I'm going to sit this in the middle square here and then with a pencil I'm going to draw around the inside one, the inside square. Not sure I get that as lined up as I can, so just... like so okay now with my cutting knife and ruler you can use your trimmer if you would rather I'm going to now cut this out so I'm going to start on this side here because I can see the pencil marks okay and then that should just come out if you've got any pencil marks you can rub them out but you should be covering them anyway when you do your frame so there is my window and I've just realised actually it was the outer uh, size of that, so I'm going to cut that again. I've just laid down my frame and it's uh, much, much bigger, so it was obviously this one. So I'm just laying that back down, I'm actually cutting out. When you see how I put it all together, you know, you can make your, your aperture any size that you want. So, yeah, so now I'm just going to cut that piece out. <laughs> I've actually got a perfect frame there for me to that for something else, but that's fine. I'm going to keep it like so. The finished size is, yeah, three and a quarter squared, okay? Then you can fold and burnish all of your score lines. So I think now I'm going to start to put it all together and then... Well, actually, no, it'd probably be easier to attach this first. So I've got here my acetate, which is going to cover this section here. So this is three and three quarters squared. Okay. Now I'm going to be sticking this all on the top so that the inside is neat. So you can see that is the same as what you're seeing there. All right. So I'm going to, I've already put some red tape on all four sides. So this is, and this doesn't have to be acetate. This could be a plain piece of, you know, paper that you stamp or pattern paper to create, um, you know, your scene. I wanted mine to be completely see-through. So you see inside the box but this base one could be paper, it's the top one. I've got another one here, which you could then look through. So you don't have to have this one clear. So I'm just gonna sit that perfectly over that one, like so. And then using my silicone foam tape, which I love, this is from Dot and Dab, Keep it between the plastic that it comes in because it's very, very sticky on the sides and you'll get all kinds of dust and stuff attached to it. So I'm then going to sit that right the way around the frame and just trim off each end and then make sure you butt up the next one right next to it. And that will ensure that none of the little shaker pieces pop out. Okay, then you want to have ready another piece of that three and three quarters acetate, piece of acetate, because that's going to go over the top. So I'm going to have green sequins. Oh, I see some stuck in the lid there, so I'm just going to pop them in there. Now if you want to pop some, um, I use an anti-static buddy sometimes to take the stickiness off of the sides of your foam or in this case the silicone foam i'm not too worried you can see they're there they're kind of stuck to the sides but it, it yeah i'm not too worried but you can do that i do that in lots of my shaker kind of videos and it's a good little tip if you don't like things sticking to the side so i'm just gonna that one it's obviously got some static so <laughs> we'll see how this goes so i'm just going to tip a few in here oh that's way too many remove some of those because I'm going to build up my scene. You've got to imagine, you know, 
I want there to be enough that are kind of going to come around the top there as well. I mean, it's not that this is going to be, you're not going to stand this upright so everything's not going to sink to the bottom like on a card, for example. So I think that's quite good. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to take the backing off of this. So just make sure it's really stuck down well. It can be a little bit fiddly to start it off, but once you lift it, it comes off quite easily. So be careful not to, you could take the backing off first if you'd rather and then put your sequins in, but then you run the risk of tipping them and sticking them actually on top of the tape. So this way I can just be careful as I move it around. Okay, and then I'm just gonna grab that other piece of acetate and just line it up with that square and just really stick that down like so now we've got our shaker window okay then I've got this one so I've cut this piece this was a piece of red card that I cut to four and a quarter squared so you can see it's going to fit within the main square then I die cut the same die that I drew around in the center then I got the next size up in my nest of square dies and cut that in white to create that frame and now when I stick this over here, it will conceal the tape and everything, but it will give the box a nice frame, give the shaker a nice frame. So what I'm going to do is just run some more red tape around the four sides of this acetate. And then I'm just going to focus on the bigger square and just line it up. Okay, so now we have that shaker element, which looks really nice. Next, we're going to cut some of this to put it all together now. So you'll have four squares in each corner because of the reinforced part. So you want to cut up one of the score lines. doesn't matter. You're going to do all of these, but I've just started on that one. You're going to go past the first score line and then to the second. And then with this one here, you're going to cut down again the same. But you're then going to remove the two outer squares like so and then remove that top square so you should just be left with that one square in the corner you're then going to do that on this side so again i'm going to cut down both of the score lines first of all and this is how you do any reinforced lid you're going to remove the two outer squares and then remove that top one so again you've got that free one there then you're going to do the same on the opposite side so you want to flip it around and again, I'm going to just cut down these score lines. Okay, so you'll have something like that. Next, I like to take some wedges off of all of the squares, because that will help it all fold in nice and neat. You won't get anything kind of sticking out or even maybe buckling the other ones folding in on them. And then also on the outer top one here, like so. I'm just going to work round on those ones. Okay, so that is now what you should have. So we're next we're going to add glue to the tops of these four squares. So I'm just going to use my quick grab cosmic shimmer glue and just cover one of them and then bring it under and bring this one this side down to form a right angle. Okay. And just make sure they line up perfectly. Try not to pull one in under more because it will interfere with the lid being able to fit the base. So, and then this one here. So you just want to make sure that the score line, or the, the edge of this lines up perfectly with this score line here. I'm just going to repeat that on this side here. Okay. Then I'm going to swap and use my cloud glue for the bigger areas here because this is going to really strengthen the sides of my box and it's going to stiffen up the card, which is what I want. So I'm going to pop my glue all down there and then you're going to fold that back in on itself. And that's why we call it a reinforced lid because you have the two layers of the cardstock. So I like to get my bone folder and just kind of re-burnish that fold so you get it really nice and crisp and also you'll be able to spread out that glue 
like so so you get a nice strong and once that cloud sets that will become very very strong so I'm just going to repeat that on the other three sides okay and now we have the perfect lid next we want to finish the base so we'll go back to this one this is really easy so you're just going to cut down any side because obviously it's equal sides so it doesn't matter so just cut down to the first score line on the two score lines like so and then do that on the same on the opposite side so just flip it around nice and neat because these are going to be all visible cut lines like so and again fold the middle one in and then just take wedges off of these pieces because you're going to be folding these all in so you don't want any of this sticking out Okay, so if I open it up that's what you should have again these four corners we're going to add our glue but because it's a bigger area I'm going to use the Kalau rather than the Cosmic Shimmer so I'm just going to cover this one and then you're going to bring this one under the next side and bring that up and again line up this side with the fold there or that score line so you get a nice corner again I'll do this one so just repeat that now on the opposite end okay so now that's all stuck down I've got all these mats and layers to decorate so I've got this one to go inside that's completely optional but I just thought it was quite nice once they take the tissue paper away they will see this pattern so it's four and a quarter squared and that's going to stick inside and then I've got four to decorate the side of the lid and four to decorate the side of the base so these red pieces are four and a quarter by two and a quarter you want four pieces and then the pattern paper is four by two and they're going to go on each side here and then these pieces to go on each side of the lid are one by four and a quarter and then the pattern is three quarters of an inch by four and that's where I've used that pattern paper pad that I showed you before so I just need to make sure I've got my images the right way up but you'll see they will fit nicely on the sides there and then these are going to go on each side of this one so I'm going to get them all stuck down Okay, so you can see now that's all covered nicely along with the base and then you should just be able to fit your lid on and it will be a nice, I'd like to, you can feel the air coming out when you push the lid down on the sides and you'll get your nice gift box and then you have that shaker window. I think it looks fantastic. So I'm going to put green tissue paper inside this one I think and then, or maybe white actually because then you'll really see that green seat twins kind of pop against it so that'll look nice so then I'm just going to finish decorating the top so I've got these here which I showed you earlier so I think I'm going to pop a couple of the poncettias kind of down here and then have the owl maybe with his little bell kind of coming over the top there might do something like that and then I'll have the little sentiment maybe up here and then I've got the leaves to kind of come in as well so I like to just pop a little bit of shape into this kind of flower just roll up the um, the ends there like so now I'm going to use my hot glue but you just want to be careful obviously with the acetate and um, this is pretty thick it's not going to melt all the way through but I'm just going to pop just a little bead of glue on the back there and then in fact it's going to stick more onto the cardstock anyway Pop that one like so and then have that one I think there. I like them kind of hanging off the sides as well I think it just adds a little bit more interest. Yeah I think I'll do like so. So I'm going to pop some glue just on the bottom of him there and then that can just sit like so. So I like him kind of lifted like that and you can see one of his feet I think that looks really really cute and then with these here again just add a little bit of shape to the ends I kind of rip off the the tail or well, it's not the tail you know what I mean the stem whatever you want to call it and then you can start building up some of the leaves let's actually put that one I'll we'll keep it there <laughs> so I'm just going to fill in these ones
Okay, so I've added my sentiment and I'm just adding some glossy accents because he's got lovely big eyes there so they can be nice and shiny. And then also on the end of the bell, you could add glitter on here and all sorts if you wanted to, but I think because I've got all the sequins and the sparkle from that, I'm just going to keep this shiny. And I'm also going to add some into the centres of the poinsettias, which I've been doing because I use the smaller one in my... Um, the smaller stand that comes in the latest Daisy May has done her own paper craft society kit so there's a smaller version of this flower in there but if I just bring that up now it goes on a bit cloudy that will dry completely clear so his eyes will really shine but I just love the sequins like I said once I pop some tissue paper in there I've got a nice gift box now I just need to find the gift that's going to fit the gift box does anybody else do that make all these lovely packagings and then find gifts to work you know match them but I think it's it's turned out beautiful so okay there's the other one again with the sequins and then the boo I like that you can just see that boo through the uh, window there but you know this would make a perfect birthday box as well you can put birthday balloons on it and have little birthday maybe shaker pieces inside the window there there's just so many ways to decorate this and they're perfect for masculine makes as well and you get lots you don't have to just use sequins there's lots of other things you can put into these kind of um, shaker windows for example here I've got these these are little flowers sequin flowers I have this is great for the birthday kind of theme and in here are little kind of coloured discs and stars they look really nice then there's the squares like I've used there also very very small beads they would work as well so they're a great size let me just tell you actually so I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning but you kind of would have worked out anyway. So it's it's just under four and a half square. The lid's four and a half, but obviously the base is a little bit smaller. So it's just under four and a half square. So it's a really nice size. And it would probably fit very comfortably four Tunnix tea cakes in as well, because <laughs> they're about two and a quarter um, in diameter. So they would definitely fit in here. But anyway, thank you for watching. I will link anything else that I can find that's relevant below in the description box. And I will link the Shaker gift bag and also some other gift box or something that you might enjoy if you liked this one here. So yeah, check those out if you'd like to. And also if you've enjoyed my tutorial today, um, if you click on my face there, then you'll be able to subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, then you'll be notified when I next upload a video. So thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.